Now the anonymous types I've done in the previous videos, I actually define the property names myself, but you can also rely on some uh, default property names. Let me just show you uh, what I did here in the previous video. Var, and I'll just call it person, even though it's kind of anonymous. New, first name. See, I'm explicitly typing out the property name. Uh, let's say Jamie. And uh, last name is King. Okay. So and that all works the way I showed you in previous videos. But say I had, I don't know, say I had some string first name variable here, which was Jamie, and uh, string last name is King. Okay, I could, instead of saying first name equals Jamie, last name equals King, I could just say, hey, new first name, last name. Okay, now that loses my uppercase here, but notice the compiler will just say, oh, okay, you want the first name, you want the value of the first name stored there, and you also want the property name to be called first name with a lowercase f. So when I say person dot, I get a lowercase first name, lowercase last name, but it's the same thing. I, let me just prove to you that it works. Person dot first name, and we'll do the last name. The way I, I did a control L, control V, V to paste that line twice real fast. You notice here we have Jamie King. Very good. All right, now if I did want an uppercase, I could do an uppercase F. I could do, I could uppercase my variable name, then I fall out of pattern of variable names. Um, I could just deal with the lowercase here, or I could just go back to how I had it before and say first name is first name. That works as well. Uh, something I can't do, though, is I can't say first name plus a space plus last name. Okay, notice this is an expression now. There's, well... These are expressions too, they're just expressions of one element. But this is like an expression. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five expressions in there. There's, there's, let me explain that to you. There's one expression here, one expression here, one expression here, and then first name plus space is yet another expression returns first name plus space, and then it's gonna add that to last name, which makes our fifth expression. There's some compiler theory for you. Anyway. Uh, I just can't say first name plus last name because the compiler's like, uh, do you want a first name? Do you want a last name? Do you want a first name, last name? Or maybe, f what do do? Uh, the compiler's like, I don't know what to do with that. So we actually are forced to be explicit here and say, well, that's the full name. Okay, full name is the first name plus the last name. So now my person class here gets a nice full name. Okay, anyway, relying on the two string, let's just have some fun here. Person, control F5. There you go. First name's Jamie, last name King, full name Jamie King. Now, when would you ever declare variables and put them in here? Uh, probably never, ever. But, uh, especially in link, when we get to the link videos, you're going to see that it's quite common to have, maybe we have a class, uh, class, person, like an actual, go figure, think we could do a real class, huh? And then there's a string first name in here, and a string last name, and all oh, zillions of different properties. But the only two properties I want out of that person class is first name and last name. So then in that case, I would have an instance of person, person P, and I get the data from somewhere, who knows where, hopefully a link query that you'll see in future videos. But I have P here, and P has several zillion properties, I only want two of them. So then I would say P dot first name, P dot last name. And that'd be nice because now I got this nice succinct anonymous type that infers its property names from property names of P and also takes the values from P as well. So nice little little extra thing the C-sharp uh, designers gave to us.